Hello Martin. Hello Mark. And hello and welcome to In the Workshop with Mark Tunley, question and answers. Today is the 17th of March 2022 and Martin, you have another question for me. I do. Um, I've grown up with test curves. Right. Um, I'm used to rods being labelled as a certain test curve. Yeah, yeah. Avon rods, pound and a quarter, pound and a half. Yeah. Carp rods, two and a half, three, three and a half pound test curves. Yeah. But in my limited experience, it doesn't seem to equate. All yeah. rods seem to be a little bit different, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Talk to me about your thoughts on test curves and are they relevant in the modern fishing world? Well, yeah, good question. Good question. I'm not a fan of the of the test curve measurement. The reason why is because there's no standardised kite mark type thing about it. It's sort of like, uh, it's meant to have been, because from years ago there was a way of measuring the test curve of a rod. It was meant to be uh, to do with bamboo coarse rods. Uh, I think it was Dick Walker and the Ilk uh, that sort of popularised it. And they basically bent the rod round to 90 degrees and the f lifted a dead weight. Yeah, yeah, they put it in a rack and bent it round. And once it re reached 90 degrees and the the tip there was uh, uh, for four inches was dead straight in comparison to the butt at 90 degrees and it was the weight that it required to bend it around pretty much something on that so it's probably a rough kind of decent yeah. idea of the of power of a rod the power of a rod and that's another term i hate which we'll cover right now because rods don't have any power okay i said um, the wrong thing no we all do even when i'm talking about rods i talk about power all the time and i wince every time i do because it's not an engine it's not an explosion it's just a an object that has a resistance to bending so so test curve is a better term than power that's for sure bending but, resistance yes resistance to bending bending resistance exactly exactly so test curves as i said earlier that they're, they're a difficult thing because there's no standardization with them they are they're just sort of they've evolved so a, a standard you might get say for instance a three pound carp rod and then that's sort of accepted as the norm and as other companies sort of copy that three pound tesco if they call it a three pounder themselves so you get a rough idea of, of uh, a consistency of test curves but not that good because you go from one manufacturer to the next and you say show me your three pounder and it's very different from another company's three pounder and then when you change actions as well of a rod with the same stated test curves they feel and are completely different and then when you change moduluses of carbon the manufacturers don't seem to change the pattern tooling and the the mandrels that they'd use for their say three pounder and once they've changed the carbon the action the power of the rod goes up or goes down as well so there's it's just really and it's really vague it's just when we've grown up with them we sort of get used to that like in-house terminology but if you were to introduce somebody brand new to fishing and try to explain what test curves on a rod it, you know if they had half a brain on them they'd say oh it's a shit idea isn't it? it's, it's a terrible way of doing it <laughs> you should you know it's just a terrible way because what does it mean like a three and a half pound test curve cut rod what does that actually equate to well, does that cast a house brick 3,000 yards or is it a one ounce 30 yard rod? What does it actually mean? Yeah, Precise. difficult to explain really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's just awful. But we're used to it, so we're sort of used to how awful it is. I think in your mind's eye, you know you know that a, a pound and a half test curve rod, you kind of have an idea of yeah. that and yeah. how that would work with, say, a barbell on a, on a, yeah. on a river. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. But they are all different, and all, like you say, all manufacturers are, are yeah. you know, are kind of different in that. So, so what? In an ideal world, how mm. would how would rods be rated? Yeah, well, not by test curve, and s particular some rods aren't. I mean, if you look at the beach rod world, they're by weight class, casting weight, casting weight, and unfortunately, they do that really badly as well. They all, all nearly all of them say four to eight casting weight. Well what is it you know so and what type of cast for that casting weight are you talking about a full-on tournament pendulum blasting thing or are you talking about just a nice overhead thump or are you talking about an otg i mean 
you know, what sort of casting style, how fast. So again, and quiver tips, you know, they'll give them gram weightings, feeder rods. They'll give them sort of gram ratings of what they can cast. And some of them, I mean, some of these feeder rods are rated to like 120 gram casting and way beyond. And that's some, well, it's four ounces, isn't it? And some. And you think to yourself, well, don't be a bloody strong feeder rod. If it's I'm not gonna... really casting, is it? That's it's a, a bit of a lob, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's an yeah. underhand. I'm going to, I'm going to cast a so-called four-ounce feeder I'm rod and cast feeder it, up and snap and throw it, it, it in at that stage. <laughs> exactly. So, so they're all pretty rubbish. The descriptions are pretty terrible. It's a nightmare for any buyer out there to know what to do. So, I would, I would have a rod describe. Um, I would describe a rod in three parts. I'd describe it with its ideal casting weight, its high-speed casting weight. Possibly a range, but a nice high-speed casting weight is an ideal. The distance to be achieved with that weight at a high-speed cast. And the, a description of his action. So you know whether it's a very tippy, fast action rod or a through action rod or anything in between. And what sort of weight it could, could cast. So if I was to do carp rods specifically, because lots of people, when, they're, when you're thinking about carp rods, you're thinking about... A lot of the time, distance casting capabilities. If you were talking about a barbel rod, you wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be thinking, "Oh, that needs to cast 80, 90, 100 yards," because you know most barbel fishing is just a bit of a lob. So, so with a carp rod, I'd give it a weight class, uh, a description, and a distance. So that would be like a, a three ounce, one thirty, medium action, and that's it. And that will cast three ounces of lead. 130 yards with a proper 80% cast. Not a mental full out of control, but an 80% fast. A decent cast. A decent though. cast. A proper cast. Giving going it some for beat. It. Yeah, I'm going for it, but I'm going for it with control. Yeah. A proper cast. And the three ounces would load it perfectly and it would go that distance. Any more weight would be overloading it. Any less weight wouldn't load it enough. So it's it would be a, a sort of thing that the craftsman would take the particular model, go out and test cast with a range of leads and a range of distances, you know, or at trying to get the maximum distance with a controlled 80% cast, as I call it. And that's, that's then I'd class that rod like that. And a feeder rod, I would give it a sort of a weight class again, which they do do, but I would say that, you know, minimum of this weight, maximum of that weight, you know, nor, and give it a range that they can cast with. It's like, uh, you, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, as we all do, and um, you'll see a lot of people talking about, say, for instance, a 10-foot feeder rod, and they say, oh, it's good up to 40 yards. And we all know, well, it's good up to about 60 yards. <laughs> Easy. And some. So I don't know why they underrate the distances. I think the guys are basically trying to sell three, you know, if you go on to fish 30 yards, you've got to have this yeah, rod. I... 40 yards, that rod. 50 yards, you've got to have another rod. And you've got to have a... Well, you've got to have a 10, 11, a 12, yeah. and maybe a 13 as yeah. well. But we yeah. all know if you pick in it, you know, I, I'm a big fan of 11-foot rods. If you pick an 11-foot rod yeah. and, and you're <coughs> a decent caster and the mm. conditions are right, you can do 70 out of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Without too much of an issue, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. So, so that's how I would class... Carp rods would be a, a high-speed casting weight, a uh, distance achievable in normal pans with an 80% cast, as I said, and a description of the action. So every rod would have its own little thing like that. Um, fly rods already have their sort of action and their, their weight of line, three weight, five weight, etc. Uh, so they're sorted. They've been sorted for donkeys. Beach rods are a bloody nightmare. They're just, any, they're just four to eight. Everything's a four to eight, you know? Yeah, and uh, feeder rods are a bit, a bit weird. It's, you know, yeah. yeah it's interesting in the fly fly rod world. Mm. They have had that really nailed for a while. You absolutely know what you're getting, don't yeah. you? It's a fast taper. It's a fast taper. Five, mid taper. Nine five. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. and they all seem to be pretty bang on. They have to be because because the um, I can't remember the acronym for the actual. Uh, body that regulates the line but if you take yeah yeah if you take a double tape of five it's the same across every manufacturer you know because you're casting that thing so then you, they can manufacture the rod to cast that to aerialize you know 80 percent of the line or if it's a fast if it's um weight forward line you know and a nice amount at that point where you want to cast it can aerialize it perfectly without overloading the rod or underloading it so they've had that sus for donkeys. Um, 
but the carp rod world just seems to be really, really, you know, give it a test curve and that'll do, you know. So, so bringing some uniformity to the confusion, some, yeah. some kind of standards, mm. you think would probably be a good thing. Yeah, if it was up to me, I would change the way we describe carp rods, as I've said, to a high speed casting weight, the distance that you can achieve, and a description of the action. Done. Easy, isn't it? Because everybody knows, because when I speak to people on the phone all the time and they're talking about what test curve to have, I just say, how far are you casting and what kind of payload are you chucking out there? How many ounces of lead are you throwing around and how fast, far do you need to cast? And so it says it already. If that was already on the bloody description of the rod, it'd be done, wouldn't it? You don't have to then acquaint it to a test curve, a magical test curve. My last question. Are, Go on. Are we typically overgunned? Yeah, in a lot of instances. Yeah, yeah, hugely, hugely. But there is a rule that I'd like to apply, which is it's better to be overgunned than undergunned, but just by a little. Because if you're undergunned, you can't do it. But if you're overgunned, you still can. So if I was, like say, for instance, this three and a half pound test curve rod, you can fish at, say, 160 yards with four ounces of lead. If you're a decent caster, a decent line, no bloody wind, everything, all the luck planets align, and pff, out she goes. But you can also just flick it down the edge, and you really can. But if you've got a two and a half pound rod, you can flick it down the edge, and you can get it out to maybe 90 yards. But you're not whacking four ounces of lead 160 yards with it. You see, so so it is better to be overgunned than undergunned. But but in my experience, people are really over the top, really really over the top. You know, you walk around any lake and you see people casting 70 yards, 80 yards all the time, small waters, and they're all great big, huge rods and reels, you know. 10 pound, 12 pound fish. Yeah, 10 pound, 12 pound fish, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're missing a trick because, you know, the lighter side of life is quite nice. But hey, you know, whatever floats their boat, it's, um, you know, I, if I was to have one set of carp rods, it would probably be 12 foot, three and a half pounders done because everything's doable then. Yeah. You see? Yeah. If you just elect, uh, elected to have two and a halves, you're a bit screwed. But if you've got deep pockets and you can buy many sets of rods, then you just have many sets of rods, <laughs> like we do. Then <laughs> Tunny Tackle is, is the place to go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Great. Right. I, I think you're. I think I've I've learned a lot from that. Thanks, Martin. Thank you.